Welcome to today's Global Connections program. I'm Bill Miller. What major challenges are confronting the 7.3 billion inhabitants of planet Earth? What can be done to promote a more peaceful and sustainable development on planet Earth? We'll be back in just a moment to talk about these and other important issues. Welcome back to our program. Today we're taking a look at some of the major challenges confronting all of the inhabitants on planet Earth. We're going to be talking about things such as climate change, human rights, and many others. My guest today is an expert in this particular area and how we can work to promote a more sustainable and a peaceful world. My guest today is Mr. Rick Ulfick. Mr. Rick Ulfick is the founder of We the World and the We Campaign. Mr. Ulfick is an award-winning composer and keyboard player who has written music for ABC TV, NBC, and many other media outlets. He's also worked and performed with Queen Latifah, Phoebe Snow, Carlos Santana, and Judy Collins. Rick Ulfick, welcome to today's Global Connections program. It's a pleasure to be on the show with you. I appreciate you being with me today. We've got a panoply of <laughs> challenges here yes. talking about the challenges confronting planet Earth. That's but right. let's start a little bit about We the World. Let's get into that. You created that. You're the founder of it. Yes. What? Uh, why was this formed? What does it do? And why did you form it? Oh, yeah. Well, that's an interesting story. And that also bridges the gap between the, the music part of my life and the social change part of my life, mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting. So just to s let people know what it's about, We the World is a global coalition building organization. Mm -hmm. And every year we connect and promote literally thousands of socially conscious organizations and businesses and individuals to really amplify their efforts and generate public awareness and, and action for a more peaceful, sustainable, transformed world. Very good, and we need more of that, that's for sure. Yes. Now, how do you involve these people? Do you reach out to them? Do they contact you? Do they go to your website, we.net? Uh, how, how does this work? Yeah, um, all of the above. Um, so, yes, so, so it's really about putting all the, uh, the change makers together. Um, so that they can have more impact. Um, you know, they can share resources um, and have uh, uh, cross-promotion and that, those kinds of things so, so that w we really start to move towards a world that, w that works for all. And I believe you were wondering why I started this, right? Mm -hmm. So back in the day, like 20 years ago, uh, I was doing music full-time. And uh, I used to, uh, do, doing uh, music, I, I used to feel like I wanted to contribute to those who were uh, creating a better world. So I used to give money to different groups like Amnesty International and Greenpeace and mm -hmm. other ones that I thought were creating a better world. But then back in the mid-1990s, it didn't seem like it was becoming a better world, you know? <laughs> and I was thinking, well, maybe I can do something a little more direct. And so I started to go to some meetings, you know, and I started volunteering. Mm -hmm. I was still doing music all the time. But um, what I found was in these meetings, the organizations were uh, saying, well, we're doing good work, but why aren't we working in collaboration with mm -hmm. others? Why is this movement so fragmented? You know, and it gave me this idea now, the idea was not to start an organization. The idea was to write a film. So what I did was I actually, uh, since I've been in media and had actually produced films in the past, like these short films, 
I started writing a script for a film that would show how the world comes together to solve its problems. So I thought this would be great as an inspiration. And uh, I, as I was writing the script, uh, I was coming up with the, the characters. It was fictional and taking place in the future. But I really thought about how it could happen and, and what the blueprint would need to be in order for this to take place. And about six months later into writing this, mm -hmm. I realized this shouldn't just be a script. This should really be <laughs> happening. So that's when I uh, decided to start an organization. So the script is uh, about 100 pages, 120 pages long. Mm -hmm. And I would say where we are in reality in the world, we're about halfway through the script. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how far we have to go exactly. to get to that point. So you took it from the conceptual stage to the implementation stage exactly. and said, this is what we need to do. That's it's right. Very, it's very true, and there's strength in numbers. There's no doubt about it. Instead exactly. of operating, in, as you mentioned, in a fragmented way, if people come together to focus that's their right. efforts on climate change, on whatever the issue might be, we see that's happening with a lot of companies that are really rallying around the United Nations climate change conferences. They're working towards trying to reduce that carbon footprint. We see it in many other areas too, but it's very important. Well, let me ask you, we were talking about, uh, in the introduction I mentioned about th so many challenges. What do you perceive as some of the top challenges, or we'll just call them problems, confronting planet Earth? I threw out maybe what might be the number one, climate change, because we be. all live on this blue marble right. and it's going to affect, it is affecting all of us. It but is. what are some of the ch major challenges you see? Right, so you know, climate change is getting a lot of press these days and it's very important. But another one that isn't getting as, as much pr uh, press, which is important to me and many others, is the mass extinction of species. And, and you may not be aware of this, but according to scientists, there have been five, or up to this point, there have been five mm -hmm. mass extinctions of life on this planet. The last one being the dinosaurs uh, 20, uh, f uh, 65 million years ago. Um, but we're on the edge of a, a sixth extinction and it's being caused by humans. Mm -hmm. And it's very scary because uh, the, the, the what could happen is that the, uh, there could be cascading problems with the food chain as more and more species become extinct or get endangered. Uh, we're already seeing fisheries collapse mm -hmm. you know, because of overfishing. Um, uh, we're losing some of the, the mammals, very scary, the, you know, the elephants, the tigers. But this is happening on a gigantic scale. Um, there's something like 75 species a day that go into extinction. Mm -hmm. And this is much faster than what is the norm on planet Earth. So it interacts with climate change because sometimes uh, climate change kind of pushes species into extinction, but also a lot of things that hu humans are doing with pollution and development and that kind of thing. So that's very, very high on, on the list. It certainly is. And as you mentioned, they're intertwined. They really they are, are intertwined with climate change and the uh, we see I won't go through the whole list, but we see or even vultures in some areas are disappearing, and that upsets the ecological balance. That's right. There's one country, and I, I'm not going to I think it's Kenya, but I may be wrong on that, has one of the last rhinos of a certain type right. under guard. There are actually guards around with uh, submachine guns I keeping know. this animal alive so poachers can't get to it. Well, there are two or three of them in, in this enclosed area. Right. But these are major, major problems. Well, now you have another initiative that's underway. It's the, I'm going to make sure I get this right. 11 Days of Global Unity, 11 Ways to Change the World. You've been involved in this, and it's going to run, uh, well, it's running uh, September the 11th to 21st. This, okay. What is this initiative, and what, uh, why did you form it? Oh, okay, sure. Well, 11 Days of Global Unity is a, a way that change makers can be promoted in what they're doing. It's really a platform that allows change makers to kind of promote their efforts for peace, sustainability, 
and transformation. We started in 2004, uh, and there's a very interesting history. Uh, you're probably aware of the International Day of Peace, mm -hmm. uh, which happens now on September 21st. So the International Day of Peace came about as a result of a UN resolution that took place in 1981 to have a day when the General Assembly would meet on the first day of their, uh, their, their year uh, you know, in September. They called that the International Day of Peace, and the day was meant to celebrate the ceasefires that had taken place that year in conflict areas. And in fact, ultimately, to go for a, a global ceasefire on that day as a kind of a symbol that we can do this, you know, we can have a global ceasefire and make it continue. So it would be on the opening day of, of the session of the, the, uh, the General Assembly. So every year, the actual date would change. Because let's say if it was the second Tuesday of September or the third Tuesday of September, mm -hmm. um, that actual date would change each year. So as NGOs and civil society began to hear about uh, I the International Day of Peace and wanted to get involved, you know, the date would change every year. So mm -hmm. there became a little bit of a, a movement to push the UN to put it on a single day. In fact, someone named Jeremy Gilly created a whole feature-length documentary called Peace One Day, and, and it was about the efforts to put it on September 21st. So uh, the UN finally came around to, to deciding to do that. The problem was they didn't quite do it quick enough. So in 2001, mm -hmm. the International Day of Peace, the first session of the General Assembly, was actually the second Tuesday, which was September 11th. So the International Day of Peace technically mm -hmm. was on the day of the tragedy. So then from 2002 on, it became on September 21st. So we, in, in We the World, we looked at that and we said, mm -hmm. there's a symbol here. Let's, let's use this to symbolize the journey from fear to hope, September 11th to September 21st. And what has happened is it, it's become a convergence of events for peace and sustainability and human rights, all of these different things. And they take place from September 11th through September, September 21st. Al and we call it 11 days of global unity. Mm -hmm. The launch in, in 2004, Desmond Tutu made a video. Uh, Jane Goodall was an honorary co-chair along with Irene Khan, who was the International Secretary General of Amnesty International, who was a major partner. Um, we had all these major partners, a long list, 125 cities participating mm -hmm. at the same time. And then the, the following year, we, we didn't even think we were going to do it again. And then around um, January, February, March, we started getting emails, oh, this is what we're going to do this year. And we realized we could do it again. And it's been growing. Now uh, we have as many as 700 associated events in 60 countries every year. And it, and it winds up on the International Day of Peace. And, and we are promoting the International Day of Peace. And they are partners with us. Mm -hmm. So uh, the International Day of Peace, in fact, has something like 3,500 events in, in 120 countries. And we're all working together to do this, this push for peace and sustainability. Mm -hmm. Well, you're watching Global Connections Television, which is an independently produced program. The opinions expressed on Global Connections are solely those of the moderator and his guest. We would encourage our viewers to go to www.globalconnectionstelevision.com to look at previous shows and also perhaps make suggestions for future topics and perhaps future uh, guests on this program. Today, we're taking a look at what we all can do to help create a better world, to look at the major problems that are out there, such as climate change, the loss of uh, diversity of species, just on across the board. My guest today is someone who's done some really unique activities in this area. My guest today is Mr. Rick Ulfick, 
Mr. Rick Ulfick is the founder of We the World. Rick, we're talking about the 11 Days of Global Unity, 11 Ways to Change the World, and how you've been able to really implement this program and, and put it into effect. You talk about the United Nations International Day of Peace. As she mentioned, there are thousands of events taking place around the world. We would hope that people would have the International Day of Peace all 365 days of the year, but exactly. it's good to focus on September 21st. But you had a chart you brought in, you were talking about earlier. You might want to talk about that sure. as to what people want and what how that ties into the International Day of Peace. Do, sure. Could you share that with our viewers? Oh, yeah. So um, the name of this chart is called, um, here we go, uh, What the World Wants. And it's, it was actually put together using UN statistics. Uh, and uh, it was done a while ago, but the numbers mm -hmm. have increased in all the areas, but proportionally it's about the same. So, and it, it kind of makes the point that I want to get into it as well, why we need a weak campaign, why we need unprecedented cooperation coordination between the change makers of the world. So here we, in this little corner of the chart, we see what the world wants. Uh, things like provide shelter to everyone in the world, and there's a price tag on that. And it's not that big, it's, it's like a, f a few dozen uh, billion dollars per year. Um, provide health care to everyone on the planet, clean water for all, renewable energy and energy efficiency, uh, stabilize the population, prevent soil erosion, um, uh, uh, end acid rain, uh, prevent global warming, all of these things. Together, th this is what the cost represents together. And the rest of the chart proportionally represents what the world is spending on weapons and war. In other words, the world is fighting over what it wants, and it's spending three times as much on fighting that, than it would cost for everyone to have what everybody needs, wants and needs. Mm -hmm. so exactly, and the I'm not sure what the total is now, but it's probably approaching two trillion dollars. It was yes. about 1.6 trillion or exactly. something like that. Exactly, that's about right. But that is exactly the case, and exactly. every country has a right to defend itself. It all wants, every country sure. should have some type of defense, but by the same token, when you put it in perspective, it does appear that we're certainly spending entirely too much for arms and armaments and not enough on social services, such as what you're talking about, housing, exactly. food, health, what, health insurance, whatever the case might be. That's right. But this is, these are extremely important. Let's talk about the you know, program that you had and the 11-day tele-summit that yes. you're working on. And who are some of the main players, or who are some of the main players, and what were some of the themes that they focused upon? You've, right. uh, you've got a, a real a who's who of outstanding luminaries, but yes. uh, who are some of these folks, and what are the themes? Sure, so let's go through the themes, uh, okay. because when you said 11 ways to change the world, that th those are the themes. And we came upon this uh, in partnership with some of the major partners that we're working with, like United Religions Initiative, Pathways to Peace, um, and others uh, like that. Um, so uh, the uh, World Peace Prayer Society um, and many, many other partners. So theme number one is unity. Mm -hmm. And you can interpret that in many different ways. Um, well, let me just set the, the stage here. So what we do, uh, what we've been doing for the, the last couple of years, working with one of our partners, the Shift Network, um, in collaboration with them, we produce this telesummit that goes from September 11th through the 21st. And we have people who are focusing on each of these themes to speak about their work, what the challenges are, and together, we believe that this it has become a blueprint for global transformation. So we're very excited about that. So the first one is unity. Um, and this year, uh, the uh, person who's kicking, who, who is the kickoff for the 11 uh, days, Deepak Chopra. So as you know, uh, his, from his work, he's been doing so many interesting things. Um, he's been doing these 
global meditations uh, where, um, uh, in fact, he, he, he hit the, uh, the, the Guinness Book of Record, uh, Records for the largest number of people meditating at the same moment. And of course, he connects that to health, individual health, the societal health, and reduction of violence. Mm -hmm. There are all these interesting mm -hmm. statistics about that. But he's, he also uh, is talking about how what we do with our conscious lives actually can affect our health on a genetic level. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I don't need to go in really detail with all of these people. But anyway, he's, he's uh, a start with that. So the second one is interdependence. And this year we had um, a, an indigenous grandmother, her name is Agnes Pilgrim, uh, and a woman named Carol Hart, who uh, is a, a producer of a, a, a film called um, For the Next Seven Generations. And it's uh, about uh, the 13 indigenous grandmothers, these women who got together from around the world. Um, with a very interesting focus on first voices, you know, the, the indigenous peoples of the world and their connection with the planet mm -hmm. and how their connection with the planet is wisdom that we can all learn from because they've been sustainably connected uh, to the planet for millennia. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we're not sustainably co connected. So the third one is environment. And uh, environment this year, we had Rhea Landig, who is the executive uh, director of Species Alliance. And she was talking about the mass extinction of species. Last year, for the third theme, environment, we had Bill McKibben, who was the um, uh, climate change activist mm -hmm. with 350.org. 350 right. right, exactly. Yeah. These, so. these are really very impressive people, and their their topics are so very important. You mis mentioned indigenous peoples. These are people that are so often overlooked, and they play a critical role in this fragile ecosystem that we have around the world. Exactly. Uh, the United Nations has uh, conferences on indigenous peoples. There, there are uh, well, treaties and what have you. There are a variety of things to help improve their conditions. And of course, the environment, anytime we talk about that, we're all involved in that. Uh, a question now, if our viewers want to hear these people, see what it is, can they go to we.net and will there be live yes. streaming? Or they can, exactly. after the fact, they can watch it they on, can, their, they on can, your website? Uh, yeah, they can do the replays. Uh, and it's, f it's all free. Um, so, yes, uh, so at, at we.net, that's, that's where the action is. You know, all the, the 11 days of Global Unity, all the other programs that we have. And we also, by the way, have a Global Unity calendar. Uh, and that's important to know because this is all year round. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's another aspect of the 11 themes. The 11 themes came out of the 11 days of Global Unity, which happens in September. That's when the promotion happens. But the 11 themes are like 11 campaigns, really, for mm -hmm. all, of, all of these areas with all these partners, hundreds and hundreds of partners. And that ha takes place all year round. Exactly. And, and people can post their events on the, the calendars. Let's say if they, they have their own organization and they want to uh, promote their organizations, we're a unique nonprofit. We love promoting other nonprofits. So that's, that's what we do. That was my next question. If people are watching this and they're inspired to get more involved, what can they do? You mentioned part of it. What would you recommend to someone who's out there who's watching this or who has an idea on how to promote a discussion of climate change or to create a better world or a more peaceful world? What would you recommend that that person do? Yeah, well, you can start a conversation. Uh, one of our partners is, uh, a new partner is called Living Room Conversations. And they're, they're pretty interesting. They specifically look at uh, forming conversations between people at opposing sides of the political spectrum mm -hmm. and providing a safe way to have a conversation so people really understand the other side. This is very interesting. So I'm just mentioning that as one example. But uh, so you could, you could create your own event, post it up, at the, the, the Global Unity ca calendar, which is 
globalunitycalendar.org. Very simple. Mm -hmm. We.net is even more simple. <laughs> right, and they could contact you. Uh, right, through the website is fine. Exactly. Well, this, I think what you're talking about here is a partnership, a collaboration. Of course, totally. that was the eighth UN Millennium Development Goal to create global partnerships. Exactly. And we've seen so many excellent successes in the past. Uh, I'm just thinking of three service clubs like Rotary International. It's teamed up with UN agencies to eliminate the scourge of polio, to provide uh, potable water to people. We saw Kiwanis International team up to eliminate the iodine deficiency disorders, working with the UN Children's Fund, UNICEF. Lions International has teamed up with, the, I guess, the World Health Organization and perhaps UNICEF on vision issues and problems. But th this is an example of how groups can come together and pool their knowledge, pool their resources, and focus on a problem and really be much more effective, uh, 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 sort exactly. of geometrically effective, even exactly. though they're arithmetically applying their resources. That's so it's right. a tremendous opportunity. And this is a fantastic uh, work that you've undertaken. But Rick Ulrich, I, R Ulrich, I want to thank you so very much for a very interesting and a very informative program. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm Bill Miller. Thank you for joining us today on Global Connections Television. <laughs>